basically said to to Sweden, I didn't know. Look, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Address the gender assessment. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to Talmahoy uh, to celebrate uh, the marriage of Colin and Sweeney. Uh, a special welcome to those of you who come from considerable distances, uh, especially Chris, who just jetted in from Singapore 24 hours ago. <laughs> Thank 
trying to introduce some humour into the, the, uh, the service. And most of the congregation were really enjoying this, uh, except in the front row there were two old rather crusty members of the congregation. One seemed to be enjoying it with his pal sitting with a poor, sullen face. And eventually, the pal turned to him and says, you're no laughing. Oh, why are you no laughing? Do you not think he's funny? Why he's funny? And why are you no laughing? Don't like him. I'll laugh when I go in. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, something which sadly has uh, prevailed in some parts of the Church of Scotland for many years. Things are changing, and Ian, I'm grateful to you for pushing things forward uh, both this afternoon and, of course, in the time of worship too. I enjoyed your ministry. Um, today, we've had some serious business and some very happy business, of course, to celebrate. The, the marriage of Paul and Sweet, and it is, it is a celebration. Um, this is something that has uh, been developing since their days together at Strathclyde University, where they were still uh, studying for their, their um, researching for their degrees, their PhDs. Um, I confess I have little knowledge of higher degrees. Um, the first degree was quite an effort. Me, but uh, all I knew about a PhD was that really you, you, you drew up the curriculum yourself. And we were very proud of Colin when he went to, um, to Strathclyde. And as time went on, he explained what he's doing in his research. And I was under the misapprehension that studying a PhD could, in fact, be a lifetime occupation. I didn't realise that there was, in fact, a finite limit placed on it, finally by the, the university authorities. And it would be around about Easter 2008 that I learned of such a limit. And the, the limit was the September weekend, when the new university academic year was started in September. But at that time, it was six months away. And Colin was much more serene about this impending um, possible difficulty than I was. And I thought, Jings, um, you know, I really want to move things forward here, but in my mind I had thoughts about irresistible force meeting immovable objects, and I didn't know what to do. So I, I, I volunteered my services as a proofreader, which um, I had done with his um, nine year project, which I claim no credit for, but he did win the prize for the most distinguished graduate of the year. So I thought, well, maybe I'll get him this uh, thing. I'll appeal to his good nature. I'm sure he'll want to use my, my, my services. So I kept away at this, and I said, don't, don't bring it all to me in the last minute. Once you've written something, let me see what you've written. I, 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 I just <laughs> 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 so, went by. Whitson went by, the summer holidays went by, <laughs> everything went by apart from the production of any written work. Um, it would be August, September, he said, well, um, I'll soon be able to lay up the first five chapters. Oh, great. That's, that's a great start. Only five chapters to proofread. And we were well into September before the first five chapters did appear. And um, I, I got to work with those. But there's still three more chapters to come. And the days were rolling on. It was halfway through the second week in September before I said, I'll have the last three chapters ready. I'll email them to you at the weekend so that I can hand them in next week. Now, this was six years, 49 and a half weeks into the seven year time limit. And the 
final words were a hand, I'll send it to you so I can hand it next week. I don't want to leave it to the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> skill in crisis management. Um, but at the same time, he has, he has good judgment uh, uh, when it comes to making decisions. Because I remember, um, we always have a, a live Christmas tree in the house at Christmas, and uh, we used to go up to people's uh, forest commission place there, because there's a hundred of trees on display, and mm -hmm. all sorts of uh, varieties of shapes and sizes. And I remember going there when Colin, I think, before Laura appeared in the scene, I think it must have been three, we were going up and down the, the rows of trees, and I heard this little voice come from somewhere over there, here daddy, here daddy, this tree here daddy, this one with the lights on. <laughs> I don't think the manager would have been too happy to see <laughs> <laughs> the tree that he had stuck outside his door. But it showed that he had, uh, had good taste. And, uh, and that uh, good sense of taste, of course, has prevailed right up to the day. But it couldn't be better with his choice of rides and uh, looking beautiful to the screen. Um, so he has, uh, he did get the PhD submitted. It was uh, accepted and pleased to say that's all history now. And of course, he's now a uh, project manager with Agile um, Technologies. And, uh, this is perhaps the most significant project of Paul's life that he's managed so far, and I'm sure that all of you, all of you who are here today who have had a job to do, and I thank you and congratulate you all for doing your jobs so efficiently, I'm sure you've all got close to hearts right now the um, master schedule, the relevant volume of all the times here, the events, where it is, the dispendencies, and the responsible person. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> We're only 12 minutes late starting here. We're not bad at starting at 10 o'clock this morning, so the British Railway was 20 days in advance. But I'm here, I've got five minutes this afternoon, so I can see he's getting a wee bit fretful already if I'm overrun by time. Why am I here? Oh yes. <laughs> Jim Leishman speak, uh, he always has a poem. Uh, he's, a, he's a very humorous poet. And this particular dinner, he was talking about uh, his father who died fairly recently before and uh, he'd been through his father's papers. And his father had kept Jim Leishman's very first poem that he had written when he was only aged about eight. And he read it out to us, and forgive my faith accent, but it's, it's beautiful in it, its simplicity. Um, they lived in a farm cottage and it was a continual, continual daughter. Jim Leeson's first poem went like this. There's a moose, loose, about where goose. So we've got a cat. That's that. So, um, I'll be brief. Um, no, I'll be brief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Carl and I approach our 
next wedding anniversary, which is a few months away, but it will be our 40th wedding anniversary, um, I began to reflect upon it. Um, the first thing I reflected upon was the fact that nobody told me it would go on as long as this. <laughs> um, I reflect upon the um, the trepidation with which we embarked on this new, um, hitherto unknown chapter of our life as we started together. But as I look back on 40 years of laughter and love and fun and the, the thrill of being married living together that Pearl and I have enjoyed all these years, it's my dearest wish and my prayer and that will extend to you, Colin, in this week. I hope you have many happy, loving years together. And I'm sure that's a sentiment that's shared by everyone in this room. Here, here. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to charge your glasses, to be upstanding, <coughs> and to drink a toast to a happy couple, <laughs> to Colin and Sweet. <laughs> to hear from your groom, Colin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I started um, preparing for this speech, I looked back in the news to see what happened this time last year, and I came across an article from the Daily Mail that read, Britain on course for third warmest march on record as nation enjoys the eighth straight day of warm to warm sunshine. <laughs> Today, 20 degrees cooler than that. Um, we managed to get the white wedding, we probably didn't quite plan, but um, <laughs> rain, sweet Taylor Snow, we were determined to get married today. I was also quite disappointed watching the news this morning to learn that today is also the sixth UK wife carrying competition <laughs> down in England. And apparently, wife carrying is a sport that takes place in Finland. I had never heard about it until this morning. <laughs> but this week, you know what we're doing for our first anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to my dad for his speech and his toast and for welcoming Swee into the family. Both Bob and you have been incredibly supportive and loving over the past year and incredibly busy having two weddings to, to organise in such a short space of time. I'm really pleased that Dad held on to his chair <laughs> on the way through the talk. You could actually see the white of his knuckles to make sure that nobody moved it when he wasn't looking. I'm lucky today because I get to give the best speech. I get to say lots of thank yous to lots of people. It's not the best speech because of the content. Um, and of course, it goes without saying that all of these thanks are on behalf of my wife and I. Yay! We'd like to thank all of our guests for sharing in our day to day and especially those of you who had to travel long distances to come here. Thanks to Chris for coming all the way to, from Singapore. Thank you to my auntie Laura for cutting short our holiday and flying straight here from Spain as well. We're very grateful that all of you are here. Uh, you're all very special to us. You've all been a, a very important part of our lives and a huge influence on us and we've been absolutely overwhelmed by everyone's kindness and generosity of all the gifts that we've been receiving. It's been brilliant to come home every night from work and find the cards and letters and presents and all these things and, and, and the build up to the happy day and we're very grateful for all of them as we build our new home together. And we consider ourselves very fortunate, not just because we've got um, a diverse group of family and friends but uh, from where you've come from, but also in the age range that we've got here today. Um, I think Amrit wins the prize at 15 months old, something like that, so she's the youngest here. And it spans all the way up to my gran over in the corner who celebrated her 90th birthday. Just <laughs> a time for special birthdays. It happens to have been Chris's 40th birthday last Sunday. <laughs> And we have one more birthday as well, hiding over in the corner over there, Bojinda, yeah. is celebrating her birthday <clears throat> something. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to say a big thank you 
appreciate all our very kind, generous friends who helped us today. Um, if you had a very panicked phone call or email from me in the last couple of days, and we, 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 we needed your help with something that, that, that it, was, it was fantastic that we were able to turn to you and you were able to help us out with, with whatever you had to do today. And so we will have some presents to give out during her speech. <laughs> it's been surprisingly busy and stressful organising a wedding. Uh, when Sui and I started this adventure 11 months ago, I had no idea that there were so many options and choices. There's cho choices on venues, cakes, dresses, kilts, entertainment, flowers, food. The list just goes on and on and on. And it feels like we've just had to make endless decisions day after day after day for the past year. One <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weekends ago, I was in IKEA with Sui, and I got a text message from Colin Brown. My phone buzzed, and I looked at it, and Colin sent a message. What you up to? And I said, in IKEA, looking for 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 table lights for the for the wedding. Can't decide between the square ones or the round ones. I'm so fed up having to make all these stupid decisions every day. <laughs> And Colin wrote back very quickly, and Colin wrote and said, choose the round ones, and you'll see they're, they're here to you in front of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> he also wrote, choose the round ones, and don't worry, because after the 30th of March, you'll never need to make another decision by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm pleased to say that we chose the round ones, and from now on, everything I can defer to my <laughs> Just say yes, darling, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> There's a famous quote, don't marry the person you think you can live with, marry only the individual you think you cannot live without, and I think I've done that today with Sui. Sui, you look absolutely beautiful, it was lovely to see you walking down the aisle earlier on. I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and I'm so excited about spending the rest of my life together. It's exactly six years tomorrow since Sui and I went on our first ever date together, back on the 31st of March 2007. Sui and I had studied our PhDs together and we were both working there at the same time but it was really only laterally that we actually started um, talking to each other. Um, <laughs> so, many late nights in the office at weekends and in the evenings. I would, Sui was late working, writing up her thesis. I was late working, not writing up my business. <laughs> and often there would be a knock, 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 knock on the door and it would be sweet coming around to say hello and how are you and what are you up to. And our first proper date went well. Um, and that sort of led on to our second date a week later where we went, went and made a trip to Edinburgh Zoo where we enjoyed seeing the animals and getting to know each other a little bit more. And so it seemed only fitting and appropriate that last April I got down on one knee at the tiger enclosure <laughs> at Singapore Zoo and asked Sui to be my wife. Now I thought that was entirely appropriate because uh, the tiger is Sui's Chinese first sign and it's a good representation of her personality. <laughs> Sui's Chinese birth sign is a tiger. My Chinese birth sign is the monkey. <laughs> that probably tells you everything you really need to know about working our relationship. Now, as our romance continued and our shared interests of in, in, in animals and zoos and things like that, that saw me offering to sponsor a penguin one year at Edinburgh Zoo and name it after Sui. And over the years, Sui and I had many happy trips to the zoo in the evenings and at the weekends to go and visit our little penguin and see him playing with his little penguin friends and see him eating lots of, lots of fish. But sadly, with the impending wedding, I had to cut costs and cancel the direct debit. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the old guy, but he hasn't written since. The jokes aside, you organising today have been nuts, but we and everything that you see around you is thanks to Sui's imagination, determination and her planning. Sui and I are very fortunate to have attended so many of our friends' weddings, 
over the years, especially the last year, where it was great you managed to cram so many in at once. <laughs> and that gave us lots of opportunity to steal your ideas. And so, imitation being the most sincere form of flattery, we hope that you recognise some parts of your own wedding and what you see today. Swee's love and support during the years made me realise that together we can achieve so many phenomenal things together that I previously didn't think possible. Her enthusiasm and her passion has made me realise that together we're an amazing team and we're going to have an extraordinary life together. It's going to be full of fun and adventure. There's another famous quote, how can a woman be expected to be happy with a man who insists on treating her as if she were a perfectly normal human being? And there's, there's two ways of interpreting that, but it's my promise to Sui today to never treat you in a normal way and to tell you <laughs> that I cannot wait for all the fun and excitement of our exceptional lives together. This has been an exceptional wedding, exceptional in the sense that it is the first of our two weddings, the next one taking place in September in Singapore. Thank you to Alistair, I think, I was up in there in 15 minutes. Again, to me to the church on time, I know your friendship. Now, Alistair's got the pleasure of being my best man twice, and therefore delivering two best man speeches. Um, so, I'm looking forward to that in a few moments' time. Finally, I'd like to thank Never. our girl May, our maid of honour Laura, and our bridesmaid Angeline. Thank you to you three for looking so beautiful today and for getting Sui ready and getting her to the church on time and not giving you too much space. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you to be upstanding and to raise a glass to the bridesmaids. <laughs> Okay, and he's going to address 
and I'm going to address him as Lao Gong. And Lao Guo in Chinese, in, it translates directly means old woman. So <laughs> he's going to call me in a very different intimate way, old woman means Lao Guo. And I'm going to call him Lao Gong. And if he called me wrongly, Lao Gong, people would think I'm a man. So make sure you know that he's going to call. And if he call me Lao Guo Guo, that would be even worse because it means old grandma. <laughs> so I call the Lao Guo. Lao Guo. Yes. James, 
who is my supervisor for my PhD and also my witness. And his wife, wow. my whiskey buddy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both for coming, and I cannot thank you enough for being here and be part of our happiness and celebration. Laura, you're gorgeous, and thank you for helping out. You have this power of coming in and taking a big it out of me. I just love you. Speech 
get another one free. <laughs> <laughs> For Colin and the rest of you making the trip to Singapore get to hear me again at the Chinese reception in September. However, by that time, I'll have sorted them out with a stag night, and there'll be even more scandal for this speech. <laughs> so if anyone here, perhaps you, Chris... I'm not going for it. <laughs> if you can tell me to translate, I cling-filmed him naked to a lamppost in Mandarin. <laughs> so Colin and I have been friends since our early teens, when we were both awkward teenagers at Hamilton College. Despite a shared heritage, our grands were actually in the same class at school. We didn't get to know each other until a bit later when fate brought us together. A chance conversation on the last day of term one year led us to discover quite remarkably that each of our families had completely independently booked to stay at the same resort at the same time on Long Key in Florida for our summer holidays. And whilst I might just have been shy and awkward, it took some time for me to turn into the dashing, charming and thinly handsome young man that stands before this day. Colin added his own special brand of geekiness to this awkward mix. Colin brought new meaning to geek chic in those days, with what he hopefully now realises was a quite awful curtain haircut and a complete collection of knitwear from the sweater shop. But it was the <laughs> But it was the dawning of the internet that really characterised the early days of our friendship. It was our generation of her It was our generation of her bono, grumpy teenagers that revelled in the material that the internet brought into the privacy of our bedrooms. No, 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 not that. Because Colin and I as well, I have to admit, Use the internet to feed a growing obsession with the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> and whilst I now understand that Colin's obsession with Posh Spice was spicing up his life in quite a different way to mine, we spent many an evening in chat rooms actually pretending that we were the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> And with the dawning of voice technology, we took this one step further <laughs> by then impersonating their accents and chatting to unsuspecting fans. <laughs> Perhaps in an attempt to balance out this decidedly shameful behaviour, Colin was also using the internet to try and boost his popularity with the cool kids. Combining his IT skills with a newly acquired scanner and a dodgy laminator, he started to produce fake IDs to get the cool kids access to Lanarkshire's most glamorous of night spots, the Hamilton Palace. <laughs> Things were going quite well for this little enterprise until the prospect of being caught, arrested or even worse expelled reared its ugly head. I remember vividly Colin running around the school dinner hall trying to get his customers to sign hastily put together agreements, stating he had sold them in good faith as novelties, rather than as <laughs> <laughs> And fast forwarding through the rest of school and the horror for Colin that was higher maths, we then find ourselves as first year students at Strathclyde University. Here we were, two intelligent young men, starting this exciting new phase of our lives, with the world at our feet. Him on a proper electrical engineering degree, and me doing something flouncy in the arts at the business school. We had a whole ten levels of student union to explore. And where did we find ourselves? McDonald's. <coughs> Regularly, sometimes up to three times a week. And our first year at university also brought with us another rite of passage. Our driving licences, and therefore access to wheels. And in Colin's case, Perl's orange Volvo 340. <laughs> However, it wasn't long before Colin had upgraded. The geek was back, ladies and gentlemen, and he could often be seen cruising down Strathclyde Park with all the other maids in his souped-up Seat Arosa. <laughs> Access to wheels and freedom from the shackles, shackles of lifts from our parents brought Colin and I, and our sisters, it has to be said, access to a whole new dimension to our social life. After hearing about his obsession with the Spice Girls earlier, I am sure it will come as no surprise to know that one of our first outings was to an S Club 7 concert. <laughs> <laughs> and so it continued throughout the rest of our studies. 
But it was only one of us, ladies and gentlemen, that completed our studies on schedule and actually got a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a certain legacy in the Arthur family, you see. To be considered truly successful, you need something special. Two magical letters. The letter D and the letter R. <laughs> having, seen, having seen today's guest list, I'm convinced that us plain old Mr and Mrs might be outnumbered by all these doctors. There's so many doctors here today, I hear that after dinner there's a minor injuries clinic being set up. <laughs> and after having received a £500 dental estimate this week, I for one am certainly keen to find somebody that can do a few fillings and take out my wisdom. Uh. <laughs> but in order to gain access to this perhaps now not so exclusive club, Colin decided to stay on at university and complete a PhD, as Mike has already alluded to. Problem was he stayed on and on and on. <laughs> So much time so there were times we thought Colin was actually never ever going to graduate. But in the end he did, as Col Dr Colin Arthur in 2009. But there was a problem with this. Long-standing sibling rivalry between Colin and Laura had taken a new turn. For whilst Colin had been playing about with circuits or whatever it was he was doing there, Laura was bringing up the, re the rear and graduated as a doctor herself in 2006. And to rub salt into the wounds, and I realise I'm taking my life into my own hands. <laughs> Laura is at least a proper doctor. <laughs> 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 do not fear, do not fear. The kid on doctors will also be in the minor injuries, correct? So if you're not up for some Botox, but are having trouble with your electric toothbrush, or you just cannot get that iPad to sync with that iPod, there will be more than a few people on hand to help you out. But I was joking earlier about how long it took Colin to actually complete his studies. It's only in the last few weeks it's become completely apparent to me about why this was. A different kind of electricity was obviously being generated. <laughs> Sparks were clearly flying. For I was here that Colin makes me so we met Colin, and the rest, as he say, is history. Colin, our friendship has taken many forms over the last 20 or so years. We've been travelling partners, Spice Girls impersonators, <laughs> <laughs> and I recently even found myself as your landlord. But I was deeply honoured to stand next to you earlier, earlier today as your best man, and thankfully, you didn't do a runner, and I didn't have to step in and marry Swee. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that wouldn't have been such a bad thing after all. <laughs> you cry! You cry, I only cry! I'm delighted that you found someone to share the rest of your life with. Someone that is kind, sweet, organised, and someone that I am also delighted to call a friend. So ladies and gentlemen, and you can now relax as I've done it. <laughs> Will you all please be up standing with me now and join a toast to our bride and groom, Colin and Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the speeches.